Pokemon Fusion is a funny concept, but a fairly simple one. You take two Pokemon and you mash them together. <laughs> no way that could go wrong, right? Fusion is something that hundreds of anime and cartoons eventually do to varying degrees of success, but Pokemon Infinite Fusions is a special case. And not just because you can create crimes against nature, but because it allows you to freely fuse and unfuse Pokemon to create over 176,000 combinations of playable monsters. So, let's begin our journey through Pokemon Infinite Fusions. Wake up, Mom! It's time for adventure! We met our rival, I hate him already, and finally get to choose our starter. What kind of horrific beast will we get? A Bulbasaur Pikachu? Charmander Zubat? A Squirtle and a Mew? Oh, just a plain Bulbasaur. Meat Onion. And then our rival has the gall to take both of the two remaining starters and fuse them together to create... Squirtmander. Laugh all you want, he kicked my ass. Fusion is just a cheap way to make weak Pokemon stronger. At least now we can actually start fusing some Pokemon. The very first Pokemon we fused was a Rattata and a Hoodoot. We created this little fella and named him Cheese. So are you all beginning to understand what monstrosity this games, uh, these games can create? We got to choose which of the two abilities we kept, as well as their nature, which is pretty cool, actually. We also got to choose moves from both of their moveset. And as much as I love Cheese, I don't think he's in it for the long haul. We need to create some stronger fusions, which means we need to catch a better Pokemon. And lucky enough for me, one of my favorite Pokemon is close by. A Mankey would be a great addition to the party, especially with Brock on the way. It was really just a question of what do we fuse it with? But considering both Mankey and Zubat are some of my favorite Pokemon, the plan was simple and meet Tantrum. But we still have Onion. And as much as I like Bulbasaur, we're not gonna use some plain Jane unfused Pokemon. How gross. So we decided to create the ultimate starter Pokemon, fusing it with a Pichu we found in Verdian Forest, and ooh god, it looks like SpongeBob. It was around then I was feeling ready for the first gym leader. But then I had an idea. Sometimes you have a thought and you're not happy with that thought, but I know what our goal is gonna be in this game. And I know it's in here. We will fuse Vaporeon and Lopunny. We will create the worst thing we can think of. We will create Every Pokefile's dream! Vaporeon and Lopunny was never meant to be, but in this game, we can do it! I'd like to formally apologize for my actions, and instead, let's just take on the first gym. We're about to go into like a rock ground gym, and we just gave our Bulbasaur, who should be really strong, a weakness to ground types. Okay, luckily we have low kick on Tantrum. I'm also now realizing we lowered our Bulbasaur's level. They averaged out. Okay, let's face Brock. We have to enter two Pokemon to do so. I think Onion and Tantrum are our strongest. Predictably, Brock's idea of a good Pokemon fusion is to literally just put rocks with anything, creating this sort of monstrosity. However, I will say his Diglett Onyx fusion has no reason to be this cute. It looks like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was a worm. And when we beat him, it was great, and he even gave us a Wonder Trade ticket, which is a feature in this game, so you know we had to do that. And immediately, we got back Luigi, a Zubat Gibble fusion. Having a pseudo-legendary this early in the game is a game-changer. And I'm sure his evolutions are gonna be super cool and not at all terrifying to look at. But let's not think about that and head for Mount Moon. Mount Moon sure is a cave, I guess. While it's filled with terrifying fusions, there weren't any Pokemon that really caught my eye. Team Rocket was here in full force though, using the power of Moonstones to try and fuse three Pokemon together, which is definitely random and has nothing to do with the main plot of this game. So like a good child, we ignored it. <laughs> No, we, we beat the crap out of them. And before we knew it, we were in Cerulean City. Instead of taking on the gym right away, I was dying to fuse some new Pokemon. Especially because, uh... Oh, crap, a rival battle. It's been a while since I've played Gen 1, okay? I was woefully unprepared for this fight, so we ended up getting wiped by Gary's terrifying fusions. So it was time to grind. We started putting wild chimeras out of their misery until Onion was ready to evolve, and god 
damn it. Why are its eyes getting farther apart? I just want a nice looking starter Pokemon, okay? At least it's powerful and we blaze through our rival this time. Doesn't look like his starter is faring any better than mine. And once we beat him, it was once again time for Onion to evolve. Oh, wait, this one actually looks pretty good. Okay, the real reason we were trying to make it past this bridge wasn't just to fight all the tough trainers for experience, but it's to catch Pokemon. Because not only is my favorite Pokemon Oddish up here, but so is Abra, a strong psychic type. Having a strong psychic fusion this early in the game would be a great addition to the party. And my chat and I decided that a psychic cat kind of sounded awesome. So we fused Abra with a Meowth and oh no, why does it look like that? Meet Meow Mix. And as much as I was physically repulsed by Meow Mix, my chat loved him. So reluctantly meet my new party member. Well, anyways, it's time to fight Misty and Grass Electric type. This wasn't difficult, but I do want to say I love her Oddish Starmie fusion. This is probably my favorite one yet. And after crushing Misty into the dirt, we earned another Wonder Trade ticket, which means we get to spin the wheel. Good Pokemon, good Pokemon, good Pokemon, good Pokemon. Ooh, Kenya the Syndical Larvitar fusion. Welcome to the team. So now we fight our way down Route 5, fighting even more sins against nature until we eventually reach Vermilion City. We also had some Pokemon evolve, most namely Kenya, our Larvitar Quilava. He looks a lot more phallic now, that's great. Meow Mix evolved too, finally standing up on his hind legs and managing to look worse. As well as Luigi, our Gibble Zubat, and he look oh. He does not look good. I also just want everyone to know that Diglett is probably one of my favorite Pokemon to fuse things with. Whatever you fuse with a Diglett, basically you just encase in the ground. And if you're curious what happens when you fuse two Diglets, you just get two of them. You know, I should have expected that. Also, obviously I'm not able to show every Pokemon fusion I make or this video would be hours and hours long. I did just want to show this Magikarp drowsy though because it haunts my nightmares. Anyway, let's head to the SSN. So we start crusading through the cruise ship fighting all sorts of Pokemon fusions ranging from kind of cool to absolutely terrifying. Until we were finally ready to get off the ship and- Oh, motherfuck, I forgot about this. How do I always forget about the goddamn rival fights in this game? Okay, I haven't played Gen 1 in a while, and I don't remember every single rival fight. Sue me! This was easier than the last time at least, and his starter is still a terrifying mix of two things that don't go together. But in the end, we still managed to win, and hey, Luigi's evolving once again, and... Your first form was so good! Why are you so ugly now?! Clearly, I was not excited about Luigi's new form, so I decided to reverse the fusion. What this means is that in Pokemon Infinite Fusions, every combination has two possible outcomes depending on what Pokemon is fused first. For example, Tantrum, our Mankey Zubat, looks like this, but a Zubat Mankey would look like this. Depending on which Pokemon comes first, not only does the form and stats change, but so does the typing as well. So because we were really not fans of Luigi's new form, we decided to inverse it to see if maybe this looks better. And you know what? Not bad. I was so happy with that actually, I decided to inverse Kenya as well to a much better result. Goodbye Shrek Schlong. Hello to this cute little guy. It may seem like I'm putting too much thought into this, but I'm just the type of trainer who cares a lot what his Pokemon look like, as petty as that may be. But it's not like I would ever drop a Pokemon because I didn't like its design, right? Let w if, if this doesn't look good, then we leave him behind. And we're leaving him behind. Okay, enough messing around. It's time to take on the gym. Outside of beating electric type fusions and solving the worst gym puzzle in the series, this gym isn't that difficult. Onion is essentially just a whirlwind of murder at this point, so they swept through Lieutenant Surge's entire team. Next, we take on Rock Tunnel, and god I hate dark caves. It doesn't help that we're getting under leveled either. At the very least, we found an easter egg where we got a hone edge, but other than that, the battles in here are tough. We even whited out once. But on our second time through, we weren't running into nearly as much trouble after a bit of training. And at last, we finally found the exit and god damn it, we went in a circle. Well, third time's the charm and we finally made it out. We even caught some new fusions on the way to Celadon. Let's also take the time to combine our Hone Edge with a Machoke we caught into one of the coolest fusions yet, and his name is Daddy Steve. 
Frankly, I'm just happy one of my fusions didn't turn into a horrific monster for once. And now we're in Celadon City, and my first stop is getting one of my favorite Pokemon, because while I haven't played Gen 1 in a while, there's still stuff I remember, and that's that you can find an Eevee here. But instead of just picking him up, we actually have to walk him around. So let's go to a nice little cafe. And in the back of said cafe, we found a Team Rocket hideout. Now, I'm not gonna go out of my way to fight these guys, especially if they're selling Pokemon. Such as a Flareon Houndor fusion, yeah, I'll buy that 100%. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Eevee? How you feeling? After? Bit tired? Eevee's- Okay, I get it! Eevee's tired! Not my fault you don't have the guts for this business. You know, Eevee, one of these days you're gonna have to wake up and realize the world isn't some cookie-cutter, perfect world of naivety. Okay? Pokemon get stolen, and Pokemon get sold. And speaking of stolen Pokemon, hippity hoppity, your Eevee is now my property. Now obviously I wanted a really cute fusion for Eevee, so I decided to mix it with a Vulpix. And look at this, this is the cutest Pokemon fusion I've made thus far, and its name is Chickpea. And since we're already by the Celadon City department store, we might as well buy a Thunderstone so we can once again evolve Onion into his new glorious Raichu Ivysaur form. Just one more to go and he'll be fully evolved. Okay, well now let's take on Erica's gym. Or not. It turns out Team Rocket has been messing around the sewers. Uh, insert shit joke here. And she refuses to do her damn job until it's taken care of. By us. The miner she doesn't know. Well, fine. At least she's willing to help. The fusions down here are awesome, so you know we caught a couple for ourselves. But we also had to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the rockets. And I gotta say, it was getting a bit more difficult to fight them. But it was a whole different story while fighting Giovanni. His Pokemon fusions were on another level. L literally, these things were like five levels higher than me. They kicked my ass. But after an hour of grinding off stream, we were ready for our rematch. Meowmix is enough to take down their Arbok Onyx, and Daddy Steve, our Honage Machoke, is able to get a couple sword dances off while fighting his Kangaskhan Haunter, and we're basically able to ride that momentum to defeat his Lapras Rhyhorn as well. That was much easier the second time through. At least now we have more time to make some Pokemon fusions. I got a Dratini and Scyther at the casino and I fused them to create this amazing looking fusion named Uzi. However, not all fusions are created equal. Some look like they should be put out of their misery. We also took the time to evolve Chickpea. Ice Fire is an awesome combination, so we decided to go for a Glaceon Ninetales fusion. The first evolution looked amazing, so I'm sure the second will be just as cute and- No! What did I do to you? Uh, here, let me inverse this, let's hope we can fix this and- Oh! I can work with this. And Glaceon Ninetales just happens to be the perfect Pokemon to take on a grass gym. In general, our team was built for this gym. I mean, we have fire types, ice types, and steel types, so a grass gym isn't a huge issue. For now, let's just go fight Erica. Her team was really high leveled, but in the end, JP is just way too powerful now, so we obliterated her entire team. Well, with the fourth gym badge down, it was time to finally climb Lavender Tower. Turns out, the people in Lavender Town are actually possessed by ghost Pokemon here, so it's up to us to literally beat the ghost Pokemon out of them? Well, at least it's a good chance to catch some Ghastly. All the Ghastly fusions I've seen are basically just severed heads floating around, and I think that's really funny. Kenya also decided to evolve into a Pupitarquilava fusion, now spikier than ever. Our starter Pokemon, Onion, is also now fully evolved into his full Venusaur Raichu form, and look at our boy! In the top of Lavender Tower, it's about the same. We fight a Marowak, but instead of just a ghost of a Marowak, it's a Marowak Gengar fusion and Mr. Fuji decided to give us the Pokeflu. This means we're finally able to get to Fushi... Fushi... Fuchsia City. All while catching some Snorlaxes on the way that'll make some sick fusions later. But the coolest part of Fuchsia City, as of course we all know, is the Safari Zone. And a Safari Zone full of fusions is amazing. Not only does it have some of the craziest fusions yet, but it's also home to a ton of sick Pokemon, so we spent a solid hour just hunting Pokemon to catch and fuse, including pseudo-legendaries like Beldum. And to start off this fusion parade, I decided to mash these two Snorlaxes together to create this chonky boy, who was so glorious, he crashed our game, losing all those hours of progress. That I spent another two hours off stream trying to recover.
And after I recovered that progress, we're finally able to make some new, non-game crashing fusions. Since after we beat Koga, we'll be able to surf, I decided to also search for a water Pokemon. Maybe fusing this Piplup with an Axie would be cool. I mean, Haxorus is an amazing- Oh, no, 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 no. Hopefully this Beldum Dino fusion looks better and, oh, that actually looks really good. But outside of that one, all the fusions I made from this batch just weren't that great. Aren't you glad I spent hours getting all of those Pokemon back? <laughs> Let's just not worry about getting a water type for now. First, we gotta beat Koga anyways. The invisible maze in his gym is as annoying as always, but the trainers weren't so bad. Daddy Steve is a steel type, so it'd kinda be sad if he couldn't body this gym. Koga wasn't any different, is what I'd like to say. But he had this. Muck and Chansey are two overly tanky Pokemon that should never be fused. Because even after three sword dances, this is the most damage Steve could do with a stab move. And if we ever did get him to low health, Koga would just heal it back up. So after a solid 20 minutes of spamming Vital Throw, the beast finally fell. And Steve was rewarded with an evolution. Look at him, now he's dual wielding. He might actually just be my favorite Pokemon right now. Also, Lance is here, I guess. He needs some help since Team Rocket has taken over Saffron City. And who else to assist him but a literal child with only five gym badges. But before we get to any of that, we have another rival fight. Now correct me if I'm wrong, because I've been wrong about where rival fights are in the past. This is not in the original games. He does not ambush you outside of the Pokemon Center. Tell me I'm not crazy, please, because I do not remember this. Anyways, we're really strong, so we kicked his ass, and he gave us a Totodile, which is pretty neat. Perfect, because we need a Pokemon that can surf now, but while Totodile is cool, I have other plans. We have a Totodile now, both are great options. I have a different idea. Because not only was I grinding off stream, not only was I trying to catch every Safari Pokemon we lost, but I was busy getting these two. Today, we fuse Lopunian Vaporeon. We create a monstrosity that never should exist. We go against every natural law. Should this exist? Probably not. Will it exist? Yes, it will. Cause I made a promise long ago that this would happen. And now it's here. Are you happy? Are you satisfied? I would like to take this time to formally apologize for this monstrosity. Meet Lilith. Anyways, let's actually go fight Team Rocket. It's time to head to Saffron City, but first, I need to change the team up. Uzi just isn't cutting it anymore, and I'd rather switch it out for this Beldum Dino Fusion, and it's already evolving. I'm so sorry, Uzi. I promise I didn't mean it. One of the toughest parts about this game is finding an awesome fusion, and it evolves into just a terrible monstrosity. Let's go take care of Team Rocket though. We're rescuing scientists in Silphco and fighting Team Rocket grunts who for some reason have decided that all of their Pokemon will now be ball shaped. Like, I like Electrode too, but come on y'all. Oh yeah, Kenya also evolved in... Oh, why is he just a floating head now? Let's inverse it and pray that it actually looks like a pseudo legend. Oh, that's a lot cooler. And after about two hours of wandering through this teleporting maze, we finally found Giovanni. Thanks, Lance. I'm glad you left an unattended miner to fight all these organized criminals. Wow, good Pokemon champion over here. Anyway, Giovanni's master plan is to fuse all three legendary birds into this. And holy crap, does this look like it's in pain. I know I say that about every Pokemon fusion, but my god. Also, it's level 60. Every other Pokemon has been like level 40 max. This battle is difficult. None of my Pokemon could do any damage to Zap Multi. Zap Multi. Zap Multi. This fusion. 
In fact, the only two that could consistently do damage were Kenya and Lilith somehow? Why is Lilith now one of my strongest Pokemon? I made you purely for thumbnail bait. Either way, it still took us three tries and a mixture of insane confusion and flinch RNG to finally put this monster out of its misery. The fusion was so unstable that all three legendary birds separated and flew off. Giovanni, seeing his plan fail, also decided to dip, leaving a Master Ball behind. That feels like something you should pick up and take with you, but I... And the day was saved. At least for now. This is only the first part of our Pokemon Infinite Fusion journey. If you're watching this, either the second part of this playthrough is up on my YouTube channel, or I'm still streaming it live, in which case you can catch me on YouTube or TikTok every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5pm Pacific Time. I'm either streaming this or some other fun game, so come check it out. Uh, I also just want to say, if you liked this video please like and subscribe it goes a long way since i started playing this game i jumped from like 8 to 30 thousand subscribers which is nuts and i just wanted to tell you all thank you i super appreciate it uh i'll see you all later